You've got a Leica 40 megapixel M10 monochrome. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's one of those interesting sensor arrays, uh, arrays again. just black and white. Yeah, just black and white. And so everything is a little bit sharper. Um, you get about a stop more light. So yeah, yeah, interesting stuff. If I you're think, a black and white lover, like, I don't know why you wouldn't own that camera. Like the Leica black and white. So, so yeah, yeah, like check this out. Yeah, that was fantastic. Such yeah. a good, good looking yeah, so the I guess the interesting thing about this camera is that um, it's not the the same sensor as like the other M10s, and it's not what the same. They have like a twenty six uh, megapixel. Or yeah, something? I think it's like twenty four or twenty six in the M10. Yeah, so, so it's like almost twice. Yeah, as so big. it's uh, 40, forty, and it's even sharper than something that's forty megapixels because of the sensor. Like, and the you got the Leica glass, so like that can yeah. obviously resolve. Some yeah, so that, that's like of, zoomed in, like yeah, like an insane amount of detail. Yeah. So that so sounds yeah, like a real cool. interesting camera. Yeah, I mean, uh, looking through these images, um, straight out of camera, everything does look a little bit flat. So whatever's kind of going on in the sensor, I think you probably want to do a lot of editing to these black and whites anyway. And I think a lot of the appeal to the Leica monochrome uh, camera would be like getting it right in camera, hopefully shooting a JPEG and not shooting RAW. Um, I think for, for a lot of people, I mean, that's what I would probably try to do if I had one of these. I'd want to get everything mostly right in camera because you're just kind of stuck there in black and white. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. But, yeah, just like... Yeah, if you were going to use stuff. that, like, as a personal, yeah. like, capture life in black and white sort of thing, that'd be a fun thing to do maybe for a few years. Like, just so ah, oh, these were the few years I was just shooting everything in black and white. But I don't know. Like, as a professional, I could never just own own a, lens, a camera like that but i can understand yeah. why like you would if you were really ingrained in a specific yeah. art style yeah why that not was, like um, what you did yeah you black yeah and white. Or, or you're just um you know a niche photography shop who shoots only yeah, black and white that's a cool idea yeah, yeah that, that, cool. i would definitely consider that camera if that was something i did yeah sure. yeah so maybe somebody out there will buy this crazy like a black and white camera and just go start a photography business i think that's a cool idea yeah i don't do know what else you different. would uh use that thing for i mean maybe yeah. it would get some use yeah, I've been like watching. in some magazine work or some travel work or something like, yeah. i don't know yeah i've been watching um all these shows on uh on a vice uh youtube channel called munchies and um <laughs> there's uh Is all these colorado thing no, no, it's uh, just like a Vice like Food Network. It's like a YouTube channel, but um. But do you do you watch it because of Colorado? <laughs> oh no, no, no. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I don't smoke weed. Uh, oh okay. But <laughs> I quit that a while ago, but yeah, nothing against smoking weed. A lot of photographers do smoke weed. Yeah. Truth be told. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like uh, in this series, they go through uh all these different pizza shops, right? And there's so many different types of pizza, pizza shops. And so I'm, I was like, kind of like watching this and there's like these people who make like a Chicago dish or people who, uh, you know, add this certain topping or add this certain like, uh, thing to the, to the tomato sauce and stuff. And I'm kind of, uh, looking at all these and I'm like, man, photographers are kind of boring. Like it's like a lot of these a lot of photographers are all kind of trying to do the same thing, trying to make the same Instagram image. And so well, they're trying to copy others success, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, think people do that in food too. Like that's why there's recipes, but there's also yeah. very creative people who yeah. do whatever they want. Yeah. And so, I mean, if you're trying to be like an artist, artist, I think it's just, it's more, it's more interesting and fulfilling it. But yeah, I was like looking at these uh, guys really into pizza and they're, they're just like obsessing over um, the way that they did this or the way they did that. And like, you know, they're really trying to create something a little bit different. And I wish there was just more of that in photography too. I mean, uh, how many people are going to buy a Mastin preset, slap that on top of their um, picture and, you know, just um, try, try to do the same thing that every other photographer is right, doing, right. you know? And that's yeah. uh, part of what I was talking about earlier today in the, in the first part of the portion is like having some specific lenses that might shake it up, that might make things interesting, that might make you but, do but things is the, differently. Yeah. Is the gear going to make it more interesting? Sometimes. Or? Or is it going to be your posing? Like Sometimes. Your, your, your bravery. The, Sometimes. Yeah. It could be any of those things, man. And it's important to realize that it could be. And maybe you're obsessing about gear too much, but maybe you're not obsessing about gear enough if you've done all these other things and you're, like, you're in love with your lighting and you love the way your poses are and your locations and stuff, but you still feel like there's something missing, then maybe gear is the answer. It's just, yeah. it's so, uh, there's so many different aspects of photography that you have to consider. Yeah. I don't know. I, I just, I don't know if I, if like my favorite photographer is my favorite photographer because of the gear. Like I, I just don't. Right. But like we said earlier, like if you were to be stuck on a F4 lens all day, 
you wouldn't be able to get the kind of images that you would want as say you had an f2 lens on yeah but, but so I mean, there's some that, equipment that's like, that's that like push a, you further that's like a big general thing and that's only like one like so like i feel like a lot of times photographers are arguing about really really minute things where like like you kind of look at you look at an image from like 30 30 years ago or whatever and like all the images kind of look look like the, the same. Like the gear all, all from that time kind of looks the same. And then like when we're in modern day though, we're obsessing over the newest thing and we're just kind of looking at these like really, really minute details and it doesn't really like affect anything that much, you know? And so like a 1.8 compared to like a F4 or something, like, like yeah, yeah, like you can make bokeh, but like... But, it makes but, a I mean, sizable like, difference though. Like if you yeah. didn't have an F2 lens and you mastered these other aspects of photography to your fullest at this point in your career, then maybe getting a better lens would be the right move. Or if you yeah. had a camera that but, couldn't but, but shoot that, past 800 ISO, yeah. but, but that, that's one, one, <laughs> maybe you'd yeah. need that, you but, know what I mean? The thing is, though, is, that, is that's one thought that's actually going to make a difference, and, like, people obsess over this stuff for, like, years and years and years, and, like, <clears throat> so it's like, it's like one day of thinking that all you really needed for that one type of thing that would actually make the difference. Yeah, but you shouldn't bottle yourself up and say that it maybe gear isn't the solution just because you've already found all of your gear that you think is perfect for you. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, for because for some people, that search is never going to be over. Like, I'm never going to stop searching for the perfect piece of gear, and I'm never going to find it. You mm. know what I mean? Because it just doesn't exist. That's why I have all of it. Because, <laughs> like, I just need yeah. a bunch of different stuff for the way I do my photography, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, the, you know, it's just different for different people. For sure. Yeah. But some people... uh might want to consider a different gear. But if you have the right stuff or you have a, a kit that you've been shooting for years and you love, yeah, maybe try yeah. some new some new processes. Maybe try doing some new techniques that you haven't done in the past. Maybe go try some and shoot of, some uh, Brenizers or do some something wacky that you haven't tr ever tried before. You know, shoot some something different just to shake it up. And yeah. maybe don't spend the money on new equipment. So tune in on Sundays when we drop the newest editions of our video podcast. Every Sunday, 10 a.m., hit subscribe, hit that like button, all that good stuff. Do it. See no. you on Sundays. Thanks, guys. <laughs> and we'll stare at you until you actually hit subscribe. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done it yet. Subscribe, 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 subscribe. You make it seem like they're subscribe. in trouble. You guys are in subscribe. big trouble. <laughs>